All right, so, um, so now I want to prove uh, this lemma in the case when A is constant. And, uh, and I will add some uh, more simplification, which is uh, I will suppose that A is symmetric. So uh, meaning that A alpha beta is equal to A beta alpha for any alpha and beta. So, um, so this is not a bigger simplifi simplification, it's just technical. It's, uh, if I don't have a symmetric function, I have to consider the character for the uh, A star, so the uh, transposed uh, matrix. But I don't want to do that, so I just uh, stick to asymmetric. So um, what you <coughs> already know from L2 boundedness is that a of x over epsilon k greater than q uh, k converges weakly to some xi in R D in L2. So, um, so the goal of the proof is to identify this xi and to show that it's equal to a bar greater than 2 bar. So, um, so I will, uh, so the, the method of proof uh, goes back to um, Tarta and also the work of Murat in uh, in the late 70s, and it's called uh, oscillating test function. So the idea is to take a, a function, test function, not phi, uh, but a test function which is uh, Oscillating and which, in some sense, uh, mimics uh, the behavior of the of the solution. So instead of taking, so I fix a beta in one in one uh, d. Uh, and I want to identify xi beta, so the beta component of uh, of xi, which is a vector in R. And the test function I take is uh, phi of x times x beta, so this is a linear function, plus epsilon k beta x over x. So I have a compactly supported uh, infinity uh, function phi, compactly supported in uh, V01 times this function, which is oscillating function, and which is uh, A linear. So testing against uh, this function, I obtain, um, so I obtain uh, the integral over B01 of A x over epsilon k, gradient 2 k, gradient phi times x beta plus epsilon uh, k, so this is epsilon k, k beta x over epsilon k. Okay, so this, so I, I test again the, uh, this test function and there uh, this is when the, uh, I integrate by parts, and this is when the gradient falls on phi is equal to minus the integral over B01 of A, X, or epsilon K, gradient UK, phi times gradient X beta plus epsilon K, K beta X over epsilon K. So phi is a phi is an element of C infinity and compact, which means topologically uh, closed uh, area or closed uh, contour, which means uh, 
topologically speaking, uh, if we don't think about uh, specific metrics, uh, basically the periodic, periodic. Yeah, there there is no 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 no, no question of periodicity here and uh, topology. So it just um, it just compactly supported. It uh, means that the support of phi is contained in uh, in the ball one. So um, so here I have the uh, left hand side and the right hand side, and I will pass to the limit in the left hand side and in the right hand side. So. Um, in the left-hand side, it's actually quite easy to pass to the limit because, because here I have uh, that this converges to uh, xi weekly, and this converges strongly to x beta um, because the epsilon k k beta goes strongly to zero because of the epsilon k. So this goes strongly to zero, and this uh, goes uh, weakly. Uh, to xi. So I can pass to the limit and I get that um, this is the integral over B01 of xi greater than phi x beta, which I can rewrite uh, if I integrate by parts uh, uh, this derivative. Uh, I can rewrite this as a uh, integral or B01 of uh, psi beta phi of x dx. Uh, I guess there is a minus sign. Yeah. Now for the uh, right hand side, I integrate by parts uh, one more, <clears throat> once more. And um, so I will first put the A uh, on the gradient, but this is where I use symmetry. And I integrate by parts once more, and uh, this is where I want to use that uh, this function is A harmonic, is the solution of the equation. So we'll get um, that the right hand side is equal to so plus UK um, so AK uh, sorry A of X over epsilon K gradient x beta plus epsilon k k beta x over epsilon times gradient phi. And this now um, you can use the fact that UK converges strongly and this converges weakly. So it's strong times weak convergence, so uh, you get the conversions. So this converges uh, to U bar and then uh, this will converge to A bar um, so dot beta meaning that uh, this is the uh, uh, beta colon of a bar times uh, gradient phi. And now if I integrate by parts uh, once again, I get the, I'm a little bit confused with the sign, but I guess here I get the minus. Uh, yeah, so I get the minus the integral over B zero one a bar gradient Q bar 
beta and phi of x dx. Okay, so finally, comparing the left-hand side and the right-hand side, uh, you will get that uh, this a bar, so you will get that xa beta is equal to a bar greater than 2 bar beta, which is the result which you needed to prove. So this uh, idea of oscillating test function is quite beautiful, and, um, and, and, and you see that you get the result immediately. Uh, there is another way. If I had the uh, AK instead of the just uh, fixed A, uh, I would need to use a diff curl type lemmas. So you can also uh, take advantage of a diff curl type structure. But here, uh, in this case, in the case when A is fixed, uh, there is no need for such a, for such a tool. All right. So now, um, I'm ready to state the, the, the result about the uh, uniform estimate. So the theorem, which, go back <coughs> which goes back to the, the work of uh, Avellaneda and Lee in 87. Mm -hmm. And which is their uh, uniform Lipschitz estimate. So, um, so there exists a, a constant C, uh, which depends on our, on dimension lambda L and M. So I will tell you uh, in a minute what is M. Such that for all A in this A per uh, lambda L, um, so now I will, in addition, assume that A is, uh, is Helder continuous. And this is just in order to have a result up to the scales smaller than epsilon. Um, so I will just state it in the, in the result, but I will focus on scales bigger than epsilon. But in order to stay a, uh, state a result about the whole Lipschitz estimate, I need some smoothness about A. So I will assume that A is C0 uh, mu. So actually, constant will also depend on mu. So a Hölder continues with exponent uh, mu. And uh, I will assume that the Hölder semi-norm of A is smaller than M. So M is the constant appearing here. Then, uh, so there exists a constant uh, such that uh, this, or uh, we have the bound. So for all solution U epsilon 2. So do I still have the equation? So I, I will denote this equation, let's say, by star. So to the elliptic equation, star, we have um, that gradient of u epsilon in L infinity of the smaller ball is controlled by C times U epsilon in L2 of the bigger ball. So I have a, a control of the Lipschitz norm of U epsilon by, uh, in the smaller ball by uh, the L2 norm of U epsilon in the bigger ball. And this is uniform in epsilon. So, um, so for all epsilon, and 
And the, the uniformity in epsilon is, uh, so I will keep the equation. So the, the uniformity in epsilon is, uh, is not at all uh, trivial because it's, uh, if you apply the classical regulatory theory, uh, classical regulatory theory involves some regulative the coefficients. So the constant, if you apply classical regulative theory, involves um, involves uh, this. So it will involve a of x over epsilon in C0 mu, for example. So you will get powers of uh, epsilon coming out if you apply classical regulative theory. So uh, this is really a consequence of homogenization. It will not hold for uh, arbitrary uh, functions uh, or arbitrary coefficients a. Um, so let me just uh, sketch the proof uh, before uh, doing it um, uh, precisely. So the sketch of proof goes as, fol as follows. So there are uh, there are three uh, three steps. So the first step is um, the uh, improvement of flatness. So this is actually the step where the um, compactness uh, argument is taking place and where you have the uh, where, where you use the uh, regularity for the limit equation. So um, uh, you know that you will, for epsilon k, uh, for epsilon going to zero, because of this lemma, you will converge to the homogenized equation. For the homogenized equation, you have a more uh, improved regularity because it's constant coefficient, and then uh, you need to go back with some contradiction argument. So step two is uh, iteration of step one. So in step one, you get uh, an estimate uniform in epsilon, but only at some intermediate scale. So let's say uh, 0, 1 half. You will get an estimate at some scale theta, some intermediate scale theta, but uniform in epsilon. In the second step, you need to uh, reiterate this estimate in order to get the estimate at some scale uh, theta 2, uh, theta 3, etc., etc., in order to get it at all scale row between epsilon uh, and one half. So the uh, the limit, so the uh, the the smaller scale for which you will be able to prove some estimate uniform epsilon will be epsilon. So we'll see why in the proof. And step three, so you iterate uh, down to scale epsilon. And step three is uh, finally below scale epsilon you apply a classical regularity. So this is uh, the blow up step. So, so one uh, key uh, tool in order to prove um, 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 this uh, holder type uh, estimate, shoulder type estimate, um, It's something we um, we already uh, encountered, uh, which is the characterization of Helder continuity in terms of uh, uh, integrals. Uh, we saw this in the in the first lecture uh, with uh, 
uh, Wigman's uh, whole film trick where it was used. Now um, uh, I will state the precise uh, result which we'll use. Uh, so it's uh, there, I think it's mainly due to Campanato. Um, so if omega is a Lipschitz domain, Uh, then for all alpha in 0, 1, so up to 1, C0 alpha is uh, equivalent to L2 lambda. So with lambda is equal to D plus 2 alpha. Um, so this belongs to D d plus 2 and L2 so this curly L2 uh, lambda of omega is equal to uh, the set of functions which, which are L2 on omega and so that um, the following semi norm is bounded so the supremum over all points x naught in omega, rho uh, bigger than zero, of rho minus lambda, omega intersected with bx naught uh, rho, of uh, the oscillation. So the difference between u and u x naught rho square. So, um, the u x naught rho, because we deal all the time with uh, means, we have several notations for means. So one notation is uh, int bar uh, for the mean. Another notation is uh, u between brackets. So u x naught rho means uh, the mean of u over p x naught. So, um, so I'm comparing the um, the norm. I mean the uh, u to its mean on this board. And uh, this here u is also one over rho two alpha int bar over uh, omega uh, intersected with b zero b x naught rho. I mean, up to a constant dependent on the omega and dimension uh, of u minus u x naught. Okay? So very often I will just uh, use one over rho uh, 2 alpha uh, in bar. Okay. So this is, uh, this characterization is very convenient because uh, this enables uh, to um, uh, to deal with integrals and um, for example Cacioppoli inequality or every time we test uh, the equation against uh, uh, some test function well, we deal with integrals so this integral characterization is very useful and let me notice that it holds uh, for any p in uh, one infinity. So we'll need uh, p different from two this afternoon. So if I replace uh, this two by p, then I have the, uh, the, the, the same characterization, uh, except that the lambda will live in, uh, uh, so lambda will live in d, d plus p. Okay, so but for this morning I use only p equal to two. All right, so and the and the proof of uh, this lemma, so I will not do it, but it's quite elementary. It's uh, basically only uh, Lebesgue's differentiation uh, theorem. 
Okay. So, any questions so far? Before before I enter the details of the uh, of the proof of um, of the Lipschitz estimate. So, um, so there, um, as I told you, I will focus on step one and step two. Uh, and step three is uh, just more classical, so I will skip it. So, um, so step one, the, the main lemma is uh, about our, the improvement of our, uh, flatness. So, I'm given an alpha in zero one um, there exists theta in uh, zero one half and epsilon not in uh, infinity such that for uh, all a in a per lambda l for all epsilon smaller than epsilon naught so for all positive epsilon um, and for all weak solution u epsilon to our star, so the equation with oscillating coefficients, um, if the mean of u epsilon square on B01 is bounded by one, so I take a family of solution and I assume some compactness on this family of solutions. Then, uh, so the mean over B0 theta of u epsilon, and now I want to prove uh, C1 alpha uh, improved regularity. So to prove C1 alpha regularity, I will compare u epsilon to a polynomial. And I'm not comparing to real polynomial, but to, to this uh, uh, to linear function. But I'm comparing to this a linear function. So u epsilon minus u epsilon theta minus gradient u epsilon theta x plus epsilon chi x over epsilon square. So this will be smaller than theta. 2 plus 2 alpha. So here the main point is a uniformity in epsilon, but only for epsilon sufficiently small. But that makes sense because you are using uh, uh, the, the limit equation, and the limit equation can only give you information if epsilon is sufficiently small. And, um, <clears throat> and you have an estimate, which is a comparison between u epsilon and uh, a linear polynomial at one scale theta. So, um, so I will prove this uh, this lemma. Yeah, maybe I, I think I can erase the equation. So there, um, 
So the first step in the proof. So step one in the proof is to fix um, theta and alpha. So to fix theta and alpha, you need to look at the limit equation. So what is uh, the limit equation? So we know that uh, will converge to some uh, um, will converge to some program to some elliptic program with some matrix A bar. And A bar is a uh, constant. And um, elliptic, so A bar and, uh, and bounded by L. So I will have some matrix in this uh, class of constant functions. Uh, uh, with ellipticity constant lambda and L. So uh, it's uh, important that my constant will be uniform in this class. And for this uh, equation, so B01, uh, B01 half, a smaller ball because I will only, so okay, so um, I'm assuming here an L2 bound, so I need more, um, compactness, stronger compactness uh, uh, to pass to the limit because I was assuming W12 uh, bound in the lemma about weak conversions. So I will uh, use Cacciopoli inequality to get bound on the gradient. But using Cacciopoli inequality, I'm reducing the ball. So I will work on a smaller ball, B0 one half for the limiting equation. Um, but once I have uh, uh, the bound via Capchopoli on, on the gradient, I can use a relish uh, compactness argument and, and get uh, compactness in L2 of uh, U epsilon. So um, I look at this equation, and a regularity theory tells me that U bar is C2 in B0 uh, 1 over 4. Um, so by Campanato, I know that, so, okay, so u bar is c2 means that gradient u bar is c1. And I have a characterization of uh, what it is to be in c1 in terms of uh, Campanato. Uh, because the uh, Campanato lemma works for alpha uh, 1 included. So I've read the characterization of, uh, of, of this. Um, so I have that uh, gradient u bar minus the mean of gradient u bar, uh, so the integral over b uh, zero rho or theta <coughs> of uh, So this I know is smaller than theta, a constant times a theta square. This I know from Campanato. And for simplicity, I will, uh, I will center all my balls at zero. Okay, so um, another comment is here I want to prove our Lipschitz regulating the whole ball, but uh, for simplicity, I center all my balls in zero. And you can do the same arguments I will do here by centering the ball at an, uh, the balls at another point in B012 and do exactly the same uh, arguments to get uh, this Lipschitz estimate at other points. But I will focus on getting this Lipschitz estimate at the point zero only. But the difficulty is the same. So I'm not uh, hiding something, I'm just technical. So this I know from Campanato. But now I can use uh, Poincaré's inequality to get that, uh, so I will get, uh, uh, so 
on the left hand side I will get u epsilon uh, so u bar x minus u bar theta minus gradient u bar theta dot x square b0 theta and now since I'm using uh, um, for Kavais inequality I have a constant here which depends on uh, theta, so I have a theta square, and here I have 2 plus 2. So this constant uh, uh, C, now I will choose, um, so I will take alpha strictly smaller than 2, and uh, I will choose Theta is sufficiently small so that C times theta 2 plus 2 is strictly smaller than uh, theta uh, 2 plus 2 alpha. Um, and this constant C only depends on the on the uh, lambda and on the L. Okay, so in the end the theta will depend on the lambda. But this is fundamental in order to be able to uh, do some contradiction argument. Yeah, alpha is strictly less than two, but um, in the end you will get um, here the, the same alpha here. But um, this is a C1 alpha uh, improved estimate. So um, this is actually better than the Lipschitz estimate we are trying to prove. So the, um, the idea is that on these uh, large scales, uh, you will get um, actually better than the Lipschitz bound, but you will get a C1 alpha bound. So the second step of the proof is uh, the contradiction step. And this afternoon we'll see exactly the same uh, scheme, um, but for the Navier-Stokes equations. So, um, so for the proof by, by contradiction, uh, you assume that um, there that there exists uh, epsilon k going to zero, a sequence of a k matrices in a per l lambda. <coughs> And the sequence of solutions to their uh, equation with oscillating coefficients in B01. And you assume that uh, the bound on UK in L2, so you assume compactness uh, in L2, but, um, but the conclusion of the lemma uh, is false. So you assume that simultaneously you have this and the mean over B0 theta of um, UK minus UK theta minus gradient uk theta x plus epsilon k k k x over epsilon k that this is bigger than 2 plus 2 alpha so the oscillation 
So the comparison between this and a linear polynomial again, linear a harmonic polynomial. So from this bound, you will get compactness, as I told you. So um, so by Kachopoli, you get that uh, UK is bounded in um, uniformly bounded in W12 of the smaller ball. And so from this, you get that um, UK, uh, um, so now we can uh, directly apply the, the, the lemma. So by the lemma about weak convergence. You have that uh, UK is uh, converging strongly to U bar in L2 of B0 over 1 half. And gradient UK is converging weakly to gradient U bar in L2 of B0 over 1 half. And moreover, um, uh, U bar serves the homogenized equation. Uh, no, no. Uh, theta is between our, uh, theta. I forgot to say is between uh, zero and one half. So you take uh, theta very small, so that this uh, right hand side, uh, left hand side is uh, is smaller than the right hand side. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, what did I say? No, no. I, I, I was meaning less than one. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was confused because of the two here. And, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's alpha less than one. Okay. Sorry for that mistake. Thank you. What did I say? Okay. So you take alpha less than one. I can put it there. Okay, so um, so by the uh, weak convergence, you also have the weak convergence of the means. So UK theta converges to uh, U bar theta. So this is just by weak convergence. And the same for U bar, uh, UK uh, bar. Okay. And... Um, and you also have that uh, this term here converges strongly in L2 to 0 because of the epsilon k again, and since the curvature is bounded. So epsilon k, kk, this goes uh, again strongly to 0 in L2. And in this way, you can pass to the limit uh, in this inequality. And you obtain that uh, theta 2 alpha, 2 plus 2 alpha, um, is bigger than um, uh, less or equal to uh, so I pass to the limit here and I get that this is less or equal to uh, u bar x minus u bar theta minus gradient u bar theta dot x square b0 theta plus o of 1, small o of 1. But this I know is a uh, uh, contradicts, so contradicts because this we know is smaller than theta uh, 4, basically, c times theta 4. So contradicts uh, the fact that, uh, 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 contradicts the choice of theta. 
because you get here theta 2 plus 2 alpha is smaller or equal to C theta 4. So by our choice of theta, this is not possible. And this concludes the proof. So it's actually very simple once everything is uh, set up correctly. Okay, so, um, so now I'll do the uh, second step, which is uh, the iteration. So step two of the proof of the Lipschitz estimate. So you notice in the first lemma uh, that epsilon has to be between zero and epsilon naught. So that's a restriction on, uh, on epsilon. And when we will uh, reiterate, uh, this restriction will appear again. And that, in the end, will limit uh, the scales on which we can prove our uniformity. So um, I let alpha, theta, uh, and epsilon naught be given by the lemma above. And <coughs> So for all, um, so for all, a in a per of l lambda, for all weak solution, uh, two star, u bar epsilon square. So the mean. Again, I bound it by one. So I take a family of solution which has some compactness properties. In place, that for all k in n, um, k bigger than one, there exists. A epsilon k and, uh, and B epsilon k such that uh, A epsilon k, so these are constants. So this is in R and this is in R, uh, this is in R and this is in RD. So A epsilon k and B epsilon k are bounded by uh, theta minus d over 2, 1 plus uh, theta alpha plus theta, sorry, theta uh, alpha times k minus 1. And uh, the inf, or let, let me write it like this first. So the mean on B0 theta k of u epsilon minus a epsilon k minus b epsilon k dot um, x plus epsilon k x over epsilon square is bounded by theta 2, 1 plus alpha k. OK, so let me pause uh, a minute to explain this result. So, um, so here, uh, and this, uh, I forgot to say, uh, holds that this is actually important. Uh, for all you, uh, so here I forgot to say that um, for all epsilon 
between 0 and um, theta k minus 1 epsilon naught. So this is actually an important restriction. Uh, we'll see where it comes from in the proof, but um, uh, don't forget to write this in your notes. So here we're comparing uh, u epsilon for epsilon sufficiently small to uh, a linear polynomial again, a linear polynomial. And we are proving that uh, this oscillation, this is some kind of measure of oscillation, um, goes to zero uh, very fast uh, when k tends to infinity. So it goes to zero very fast with k. So uh, let me just uh, write this in another form. So this, uh, um, you see that this is uh, bigger than the inf of all A in R and B in RD of u epsilon x, so of the in bar, leader to the k, minus a minus b dot x uh, square. OK, so um, if you don't like the a epsilon k and b epsilon k. So the iteration uh, May I ask, I cannot see you. On, on what domain do you integrate that? Uh, B, uh, no, so the ball is no, the zero. Yellow one, yellow one. Uh, uh, the same. The, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, so the iteration would be easier uh, if there was not, uh, if no uh, correction key, uh, kappa. Okay. So it would be easier, and in that case, we would have uh, a epsilon k is equal to the mean of u epsilon uh, on the ball of radius theta k, and b epsilon k would be the mean of radius u epsilon on the ball of radius theta k. Okay. But here, since we have the k, uh, there is some correction and. And this bound here is very important if you want uh, to actually use this result in the end to get the Lipschitz estimate. Because uh, uh, to get the Lipschitz estimate, um, uh, you will uh, compare u epsilon to constants and put this on the right hand side. And you have to estimate this right hand side. So you need a bound on b epsilon k. All right, so um, I will prove this uh, iteration lemma. And um, the, so there, the iteration is on K. And um, so for K equal to one, it's simply uh, lemma one or lemma of step one. Uh, and you notice that uh, you can estimate the, the mean of uh, u epsilon theta by just applying Helder inequality. Uh, this will be uh, theta minus d over 2. Um, theta minus d over 2 uh, times the b0 theta of u epsilon square, uh, one, one half. So this is just on the basis, basically. Um, so, and 
And the same thing for the gradient. So this is uh, bounded by one, but for the gradient you will get some constant. Okay, so this theta minus d over two is the one appearing here. And we'll use that for uh, recursively also. So for k bigger than one, uh, we'll consider, um, so we'll start from this, uh, or, or this bound. So we'll assume the bound for uh, k, for some k uh, bigger than 1. And we'll prove it, or uh, for, let's say, k minus 1 bigger than 1. And we'll prove it for k. So we'll consider the auxiliary function mu epsilon of x, which is uh, the rescale thing. So I will consider u epsilon of theta k minus 1 x minus a epsilon k minus b epsilon k theta k minus 1 plus epsilon k theta k minus 1 over epsilon x square, I'm uh, sorry, over theta uh, 1 plus alpha k. And this function has good properties. So this function first uh, has, uh, if I integrate it over b01, this is smaller than 1 squared. So why is that? Just because of the recurrence hypothesis. This is uh, simple to check. Just make a change of variables, and you will see that uh, this is true. And u epsilon, moreover, is a solution of the equation. So minus divergence a theta k minus 1 x over epsilon gradient u epsilon is 0. And it's a solution of the equation because this is a solution of the equation. This is constant and this is uh, a linear because of the corrector. So it's a solution of the equation. And now you want to apply uh, the lemma 1 to this capital U epsilon. Um, and so if you apply lemma 1 to this capital uh, U epsilon, you get that for epsilon smaller than theta k minus 1 epsilon naught. So why that? Because uh, this is like if you want your new epsilon tilde, the, the scale at which the, the, uh, you have the oscillations. And so this epsilon tilde has to be smaller than epsilon nut uh, in lemma 1. So you get this condition. So, um, so you apply the regulative theory, uh, the, the first lemma and you get that 2 plus 2 alpha is bigger than the mean over b0 theta of u epsilon uh, minus all their um, quantities for u epsilon which I don't write again but and this is equal to 1 over theta 2 plus 2 alpha k minus 1 and the mean over b0 theta k of u epsilon of x minus a epsilon of k minus b epsilon of k square okay and with a epsilon k which is a epsilon k minus 1 plus theta alpha so this is also just a simple computation alpha k minus 1 
times the, the mean of u epsilon theta. And the same thing for b epsilon k. So, um, so you have the uh, uh, recurrence hypothesis on the a epsilon k minus one, the b epsilon k minus one, and the u epsilon, uh, because it satisfies this bound, it also satisfies those bounds. So you can uh, you can get the uh, result for a epsilon k and b epsilon k at step uh, k by just using the bound for uh, capital U epsilon, because it satisfies exactly the same a priori bound than the small U epsilon. So you can do exactly the same computation here as you did for U epsilon. So in the end, you get uh, the the uh, bound for A epsilon k and B epsilon k. And this here, if you put this in the uh, left hand side, this will give you uh, the right decay, which is here. So this is the uh, conclusion of the iteration step. So uh, er, I mean, there, there are some computations I'm hiding, but um, their essential idea is here. So um, I will just take uh, five more minutes. Uh, I mean, if you need to leave, or, or you can of course leave, but. I just want to talk about uh, Liouville theorems in five minutes. Um, and um, so there, it's quite clear how this now, uh, how the Lipschitz estimate is a consequence of this uh, improved uh, C1 alpha estimate. Because here we get the, we got the estimates for all scales between epsilon and one half because uh, of the restriction here, we have uh, theta k minus one, which is to think about the scale's rule at which you can prove an estimate, which is bounded by epsilon over epsilon naught. Okay, from below. Because of this, and so it's clear from this that the scales for which you can prove this improved bounds are the scales between epsilon and one half. And below that, because uh, if you want the whole Lipschitz estimate, you need to estimate below uh, this scale epsilon, you will apply classical regularity. So that's what I meant with uh, improved regularity taking place on scales epsilon to one half. And, um, okay. And actually this improved regularity now uh, is the, the key tool for uh, getting Liouville will estimates. Uh, you will uh, type theorems. So I'm considering now the equation in the whole of RD. So I'm considering solution to this equation in the whole of RD. Uh, so you know that if I didn't have our oscillating coefficients, uh, constant coefficient, uh, there, uh, I have Liouville theorems which characterize the polynomial solution of this equation. Um, but um, it's so looking at uh, this equation in a big ball. So looking at uh, this equation in B zero R for some large R is somehow equivalent to uh, asking the question about uniform estimate for small epsilon, because just doing a rescaling, uh, taking epsilon is equal to R minus one. I have an equation with uh, highly oscillating coefficients in a domain which is B01, which is fixed. So this is the, the key insight of how to use uh, this uh, estimate uniform in epsilon. 
Yeah. So now uh, I take in RD. So I will take be able to take uh, Abelian large balls R, B zero R. So the theorem is the following. <coughs> Um, so if there exists constant c and sigma in zero one, such that for all r, let's say bigger than this here, um, the mean of u square over b zero r is bounded by c r to sigma. So if I have a bound on the growth of uh, u square for sufficiently large r, then there exists a in r such that u of y is equal to a for all a uh, for all y in r. So u is constant. Actually, here I can allow u to grow uh, sub. Uh, I mean, it does not need to be bounded. It can grow sub uh, linearly, so s slow, slower than a uh, linear function. S sorry. And um, and the second part of the theorem is a. Uh, uh, if there exists c and sigma again in zero one. So c is bigger than zero and uh, sigma is in zero one. Such that for all r bigger than 1000, the mean of u square over b zero r is smaller than r two plus two sigma. So I'm assuming that the growth of u is, uh, can be linear, but also sub-quadratic. Uh, and in that case, then, there exists uh, a in r and b in rd, such that u of y is equal to a plus b dot y plus ky. For all y in R. So this uh, characterizes the uh, solutions to this equation, uh, which grows sub uh, quadratically uh, at infinity. And uh, this tells me also the, the remark I made at the beginning of the lectures that um, the constant and their a linear functions are. Uh, the building blocks of regulative theory. So, uh, to prove this, I will just uh, write one estimate um, and I will let you think about uh, how this estimate uh, enables to prove uh, uh, the claim. So, um, so for, uh, I'm looking at the solution of ay gradient u in b0 r, okay, uh, for large r. And then um, uh, there exists a constant c uh, depending on uh, dimension lambda l alpha such that um, so for all solution uh, to this equation the inf of a in r and b in rd of the mean of uh, over b0 r of u of y minus a minus b dot y plus k this is bounded by c times r over capital R 2 plus 2 alpha 
is your off. So um, this is just a rescaling of the previous uh, uh, estimate. So this holds for any r between uh, 1 and r over 3. So this is just a rescaling of the previous uh, estimate of uh, lemma 2. And once you have this estimate, uh, then you can use uh, the growth of this integral here by assumption uh, and let r capital R go to infinity and get and get the result. Okay, so I uh, I conclude the proof here and uh, I, I stop this lecture here. So this afternoon I will talk about free mechanics and uh, and Navier-Stokes equation in uh, in three dimensions. Thank you.